Hey guys, we got another ship in. This one's all the way from Athens, Alabama. So let's take a look and see what's inside. All right, looks like Invisible Skin starts right here at Telly. And we've also got some highly detailed notes and some really good packaging. Props. And here it is. Let's see what we got. What? Tin foil. That's crazy. To deal with crazy, we're gonna have to get a little crazy. So I got this hat. And just by looking at this phone, I can tell exactly what went down. This is a failed DIY attempt. Just by looking at this indent right here, it looks like the wireless charging coil got ripped out of its place. I still see some glass in some areas, and that's not even the scary part. That's on the front. They used so much heat that it went completely through the phone and toasted the front screen. It's gonna be very interesting on the inside, so let's figure it out. Thanks, Telly Hat. Naturally, we'll begin by peeling the tin foil off the back of the iPhone. Never thought I'd be peeling an iPhone like an onion, but hey, whatever works. Just as I thought, we're missing the wireless charging coil. So I talked to the customer, and if you think that damage was bad, wait till you hear this. I'm not gonna name any names, but that damage was actually caused by another repair shop, and that just makes it so much worse. Of course, the water and dust resisting seal is missing, but hey, at least it's got an iFixit battery. That's a notable brand. But this thing, it's not turning on. So I'm curious to see what else we're gonna find out. I'd like to apologize for coming after the customer, thinking that they did this repair, but can you blame me? This did not look like the work of a professional. Turns out the customer went to them with a completely fine functioning phone. The only thing that was wrong with it was a broken back glass but they came out with a missing wireless charging coil and a completely dead phone that doesn't turn on. They told the customer that it needed a new motherboard and then they had the audacity to wanna to charge $800. The customer wasn't having that, so he sent it our way to see if we could bring it back to life. To do that, we're gonna plug in all these new parts and see what it needs. So we got the wireless charging coil put in there and we'll go ahead and slap in a new battery as well as a screen and see what happens. Huh, nothing, let's plug it in. Wait a second, the board's getting really hot. That's not good, but it could be the charging port cable heating up. So let's try that out before we start thinking worst case scenario. And this thing keeps getting hotter, so we're gonna have to keep going to see what's going on. That part of the repair was giving me quite a headache, so we're just taking a little break and gonna transfer over the components on the screen, and then we'll get back to the rest. And we're gonna reprogram the new screen by reading the code off the original screen, enter a wormhole through reality, and then write it onto the new screen flawlessly so that they can have true tone. Moving back to the original issue, there could be a dozen reasons as to why this isn't turning on, but let's move on to the camera. Huh, that shouldn't be there. I'm not sure how this happened, but somehow this piece of glass got pushed up all the way, got lodged underneath the camera, and then it kinked this cable right at the top. And I also found some more damage on a different cable. That just looks like some pry damage from a rookie technician. So we'll put a new camera in there and hope for the best. Hopefully this works. We won't be needing this anymore. Hey, death by camera, no more. Let's make sure that everything still works. Nice, still charges. 
flash works, cameras work. Hey guys. All right, now that we've got it all figured out, I just want to test out the iFixit battery to make sure if it's still good. And, uh, yeah, it's a goner. But that back glass isn't. Surprise, surprise, we got a crunch time for you. <laughs> Now it's crunch time. Making laser sounds for every video takes a toll on me. So I want to give you guys an opportunity to help me with my content creation and send me a video of your best laser sounds to my Instagram and I'm going to look through them. I'm going to pick out my favorites and I'm going to throw some in my videos and I'll be sure to tag you. So while you're there, go ahead and give me a follow. Moving on, we'll begin reinstalling the internal components before we put on a new back glass. When the wireless charging coil was torn, that was connected to the toggle switch and volume button cables. So right now I'm replacing that. Thankfully, none of the bottom components like the Taptic engine or the charging port got fried, so I didn't have to remove them. But I went ahead and removed everything else before I stuck it in the laser machine. This part actually had some off-camera prep. I had to solder the volume button and toggle switch cable onto the wireless charging coil. Just the right amount of heat really gets things moving. Reinstalling the toggle switch takes a bit of fiddling, but with just the right angle, it slips right in. Once you get it in, you want to make sure that it stays in. So you're going to screw it from the right and the left. The goal is to restore it to as close as original as possible. Whoops, almost forgot to take out this little metal bracket that holds down the motherboard. Moving on to the camera, this thing slides right in, but it won't let Face ID work. That only works with the original camera because it has serialized components. They're actually chips underneath the camera, and we would have to dissect that camera and transfer over the chips from the original one onto the new one, or we could try fixing the flex cables, but we'll do that at a different time. When reinstalling the battery, the most important thing is lining up the battery connection. That way you don't run into issues when you're trying to plug it in. There's a special way to prep for the seal. You gotta make sure it's squeaky clean with some isopropyl alcohol. I see this issue time and time again, and it's one of my biggest pet peeves. People don't replace the seal, and that can be catastrophic to the phone. Do you want them to come back to you with a water damage issue? No, I don't think so. So don't be lazy or learn how to do it right, just like this. Make sure it's squeaky clean and then you're gonna use your spudger tool and make sure that that thing doesn't move an inch. And go over it several times so that it sticks to the frame properly. Yeah, it may add a few minutes to the repair, but it's gonna save you and the customer a lot of time and heartache in the long run.
And here we are nearing the end. We've got the screen plugged in. We're screwing down the final screws. And we're just gonna make sure that that front camera is squeaky clean right before we put it down. We're down to the final two screws of the night. All's left is some frame prep for the back glass and we've got some something a little interesting going on here. Not only did they completely destroy the phone, looks like they left some crusty sock remnants underneath the glass. Contrary to popular belief, the backside actually doesn't have a water and dust resisting seal. It's actually just adhesive. So when we put it on, we have to make sure to do it just right. We'll apply some industrial strength glue in a way that ensures an airtight seal all around the edge. And we'll put a few drops of super glue just to lessen the cure time right before we replace the back glass. We'll give it a nice cleaning just before we clamp it down for only about five minutes, thanks to that little super glue trick. We'll take it out of the clamp and wrap it up with one last cleaning. We wanna make sure that it looks like this repair never even happened, not a single drop of glue. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, this thing went from being absolutely wrecked to practically brand new, other than that face ID, of course. Everything else seems to be working fine, and in the meantime, I just want to thank you guys for all of your support because it means the world to me.